So finally a day off so I can come and work on my car. Hopefully by the end of today, I'll get it running. Just a couple of bolts and your bracket is on. Now time for the alternator. So you got this guy on, it was easy. Next goes the power steering on this end. That's good. So I open it up to take a better look inside. I can see the shiny inside the piston chamber, so at least I know I got that. Here you can see the cams. Everything looking real nice. Brand new timing chain, oil pump, covers. Got the rocker arm stoppers. Those are the 270s that you see. Now look at that. Super huge. So what I'm gonna do right now is put on the timing uh, cam angle sensor. And I was watching this cat on YouTube. So I'm gonna go based off of that and, uh, and I'll be back. Alright, so here we are. First thing you gotta do is put on your plate there. And this guy just give it some love taps. Just kind of sit it. Try not to touch the flywheel as much as possible, just so you don't have to clean it so good. Of course, that's kind of tough. You're gonna have to touch it and whatnot. But we got uh, the bolts here. What I'm using is uh, five eighths. I'll be torquing it down at 80 foot pounds and using this applied, uh, where is it? This fastener assembly lube that came with it, which kind of serves like a lock kite also. All right, so here goes the clutch. The only thing that kind of sucks is I don't have the alignment tool. I'm gonna have to just eyeball it, put on all these bolts, put them kind of mid tight hold it to the center and then just tighten it and hopefully it stays right there so a little sketchy but it'll work i got a couple more bolts to go on there cleaned it real nice with some brake cleaner so it's all nice and shine so yeah coming along pretty good let's get this clutch on so here she goes we got her on the jack or on the freaking cherry picker had to lower the car down a little bit because this bad boy only goes up so high and i'm kind of happy because as you can see i got my rack and pinion real nice and clean i've never seen it that clean before and if you can relate to my previous video you'll see how much cleaner the engine bay was it's still kind of soggy and ugly but it'll pass so let's get this bad boy in the car all right so we're back in here Basically what we have is some fully synthetic gear oil for the tranny and for the first time I'll be trying it by uh, putting it here in the shifter area. 
So, uh, there it goes. Hell yeah. So I finally got the brand new gasket that I bought. Part number. I had to order this bad boy overnight. Put it in there. Added the two and a half quarts of the tranny fluid. Put the short shifter back on. So, inside, done. Now on to the final connections that go here inside the engine bay. So, first things first, let's get everything up top connected. Man, oh man. It's kind of funny how this shit works when you own a Sylvia. There's one thing or another that's always freaking breaking down on you. So I get the engine to finally turn over. Everything's sounding nice. Next thing you know, the water just keeps leaking from the bottom. So as it turns out, since that bad boy is way up in there and can't reach it, I'm going to have to remove the intake manifold and tighten it up as tidy as can be and hook it all back up. That's going to take a few hours out of my day. Just cag my day. I almost feel like turning it on right now just for the camera. However, it's gushing out tons of water and it's going to throw out all my coolant and I kind of don't like that idea, man, because them shits don't come cheap. So, uh, yeah, man, this is quite a bit of coolant that it's spilled and it's all coming from, like I said, that little area. I don't know if you can see it. You can see that hose clamp right there. There's another one right next to it where it comes around and returns it. I can't believe I didn't put that bad boy that tight. I mean, maybe I did and it's kinked. I don't know. But long story short, that's what I got to do to fix it. Let's get working on it, man. Damn it. All right. So here's taking off the intake. And the uh, problem is coming from here. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm just kind of doing it and then suffering the repercussions later. But I think this should just go around and go right back in there. But if you look at this tube, it's, it's not even wet. So I have no idea what the hell's going on. I mean, I don't know what is up, why, why that's happening. So let's check it out, see what happens here. Oh man, oh man, some tedious work I've had to do on this car. You don't even know the halves of it. Basically, every time I would turn it on, it would spew oil out from the connection that goes connected to the, they call it the, I guess the oil filter plate. Basically that one in the middle, uh, I didn't have it on too tight. So that little washer that it's got or that little rubber seal, it just wasn't really pressed up against her. So I turned it on already quick demo turn on and uh, didn't seem to be leaking so as far as the leakage I may have finally fixed it but I had to take off the intake three times before I finally realized where it was coming from and how to fix it so let's give her a crank leakage found out what it was you can't see it from there but right there fuel line was loose everything's going on without a champ no more leakage I'm gonna leave it on let it warm up just got to keep an eagle eye on my oil pressure and my temperature let it get up to temperature can hear the 270 cam action 